Branding your videos for YouTube is a very important thing and it ups the quality of your videos big time to have some sort of logo, some sort of branding on your videos, whether it's through the whole video or not. But a lot of people don't know how to create this branding. And in this video, I'm going to show you exactly how to do that very quickly and easily. Let's get started right now. Hey there, I'm Todd Out Live. I'm an avid video creator. I do live video, I do YouTube, and I've done a lot of podcasting. So I'm a broadcaster in general. And branding videos is something I've been doing for a very long time. I'm a big believer in having your branding all over your videos, as long as it's not obnoxious. And I'm gonna show you exactly how I do it quickly and easily so that you can do it as well. So the branding that I'm gonna create is going to be on a transparent overlay that you can put on top of photos. You can put it on top of video. And as a bonus in this video, I'm gonna show you how to place it on top of a video so that you know how to do it and you can get started right away. And if learning how to create awesome videos and doing so in a consistent basis so that you can build your brand or business on LinkedIn, YouTube, wherever you wanna do video, be sure to hit the subscribe button down below, hit the bell if you wanna be notified so that when new videos come out, you get a little notification and you will be tuned in and will know what's going on and can learn as I teach everybody else. Okay, so before we get started, I just wanna say a couple things. I use Adobe products. In this video, we're gonna be using Adobe Photoshop and Adobe Premiere Pro. Uh, you can use, instead of Photoshop, you can use Canva. There's a lot of other um, inexpensive or free photo editing platforms and software out there, but I use Photoshop, so that's what I'm gonna be teaching in this video. I also use Premiere Pro heavily. Okay, so the first thing I'm gonna do is I'm gonna open up Photoshop. As I said, Photoshop is the uh, editor that I use for creating images. And what you see here is a logo that I created that is sitting on a transparent image. If it wasn't transparent, it would have a color in the background or perhaps a picture in the background. But see how this um, graphic that I've created, it, it sits over top of a, uh, a an image or a color. And if I select all the elements within my graphic, I can move them. Uh oh, I selected too many things. Let me undo that. I still have my picture selected Move that. So I can take this logo and I can put it anywhere I want and I can even resize it if I want to. Now, any program that you use is gonna allow you to do these sorts of things. Over here, we have the layers. These are all the elements in the photo and the things that are higher up um, on the list are on top of one another. So if I move the photo all the way up to the top of this list, you're gonna see that everything gets hidden behind the photo. But because the photo is down at the bottom of the list, then the things that are above it are on top of it. Same thing, if I move it below this blue layer, the blue layer is on top of the photo now. So that's how the layers work. And most decent um, video or photo and videos, even video works in layers. And so that's what we're doing. We're creating a transparent uh, logo so that this can be placed on, sorry about that. This can be placed on top of a video or a photo with ease and you can put it as a lower third you can put it up in the top left corner top right whatever you want to do if you want to if you want to make it bigger uh you can do that and then you can center it in the entire image uh you could do something like that look at this this is nice you can do that and then if you want you know say other things like you want to let people know you're on linkedin or you want to let people know you're on facebook uh, there's all sorts of things that you can do to manipulate uh, your image to uh, make it interesting. So we're going to start with creating just this um, graphic here so you can see what I do and you can kind of do the same thing. So we're going to start a new document and I'm going to do it in the size uh, of 4K. Now, I probably don't have to make them this big, but I want to make sure that it works. And I record in 4K and everything's in 4K. So that's 3840 by 2160. And I'm going to create that. So the first thing I'm going to do is create some text. And that's my the text that I've been using, the Arial Black um, in italic. And I'm going to create my one video. Uh, and I don't want to use black. That's actually a blue text, I believe, but I want it to be white. And so I'm going to change the color, of course. So I have a white 
uh, one video and then I'm going to create a box to go around it. Now, if I create, I got to create a new layer to create a box and I'm using this uh, inside the inside Photoshop. It's called the rectangular marquee tool. I don't know what they call it in uh, Canva or any of the other popular um, image and document programs, but in this one, it's called the elliptical marquee tool and it allows me to create um, it allows me to create rectangles and I'm going to create a rectangle, but I need to create a new layer because if I put it over top of this layer, um, it's, I don't want it. I want layers. You, your work is a lot easier when it's done in layers. It, it's easier to manipulate things. So every element needs to be in layer. If you have a word, that's a layer. That's a, that if you have several words in one line, that could be the, the same layer. But you know, if you're gonna have words stacked up or down, you might do different layers for each one. It just makes your work easier. So I'm going to create a layer a new layer and I'm just going to name it one video box okay and if I leave it on top of the word one video and I go and I create a, uh, a square uh, what I'm going to want to do is, is I'm going to want to fill it with red and I just use that to make it easy on myself I use whatever red I, I send the red all the way up to the top and then I select that red all the way at the top and that way I don't have to remember color codes and then I select every every software is going to have a, a paint bucket of some sort, and I'm going to fill it with the red. But because the one video box is over top of the one video word, you can't see the one video word. So I'm going to deselect my uh, my box because I'm done working on it now, and I'm, st I'm just going to go over here and rearrange the layers and look at that. There's one video just like that. It's that quick, folks. So I want to uh, supersize this. And I want to do them both at the same time because I think those dimensions look pretty good. The, the one video in the, the word in the middle of the box looks like it's appropriately placed. So I'm going to select both of them over here in the layers and I'm going to make it big so I can see it. Now, now that it's big, it looks like the word one video could be a little bit bigger. So I, I select just the word one video and I'm going to play with that just a little bit to give it a size and fill the box a little better. And I'm going to make sure that it's centered. I might have to get rid of that. And there we go. It's kind of centered. It kind of clicks into place and you just kind of, there we go. So I like that. So I need an element that says with Todd.live. So let's do that really quick. I'm like lowercase down here. So we're going to do that. And I want this in black. I'm just going to do black. I usually do this certain blue that I like but I don't have the color code. I don't really want to fuss with the color code. I'm trying to make this video quick for you guys. So I'm going to place it right here, which is about where I place it in my logo, right? Uh, if we go back to this one, I mean, that's what we've got, something very similar. So I'm going to do the rectangular marquee tool again and quickly go over the Todd.live. I'm going to select my paint bucket again with the white and I'm going to, oh, I need to create a new layer, right? create a new layer and I'm going to call it the Todd.live box. Okay. And then when I go to paint it, there it is. And of course we need to rearrange it in order to see it. And there we go. Just like that folks. Now I'm not going to worry too much about the spacing of it because I just want to do a quick video for you guys. I'm not going to get super uh, down to earth and I'm going to deselect and get rid of those little mark. They call those marching ants. Uh, I'm going to put reselect you see those they call those marching ants and that's the, that selection is what you're working on when you're done with it you can deselect it so so there we go and if i select all of them over here in my layers box i can move them all right and i can resize them and that's exactly what i'm going to do i'm going to resize them i'm going to make this like it's it's a little bit of a lower third and let's say i'm going to put it in a video of mine and it's gonna be in the lower right hand corner. So it gives me some branding in my video. It's out of the way, but it lets people know what they're watching and all that. So I am going to save the file and I first am gonna save it. I always save it as the file for whatever program I'm using. So if you're using Canva, there's probably a .can or something like that. With Photoshop, if you see up here, it's .p, excuse me, .psd. So that's a Photoshop file and that's the file that's a file that has all the layers separated inside the inside the file. So if I ever open it again, all the layers are present. So I'm going to uh, title this. I'll just call it one video um, example and I'm going to save that as a PSD. But I need to be able to place this over top of videos and over top of pictures 
And um, if I do that with a PSD file, it's not going to work in every pro software program. I do think the software programs that I use, which are ScreenFlow and Premiere Pro, both of those will take a PSD file. But there's a lot of programs out there that aren't going to take a PSD file. And your transparency has to be saved in a, um, a PNG file. Um, otherwise, it's not going to be a transparency. It's going to be something else. So, and just to give you an idea, if I were wanting to lay this over top of a picture, I could go into my file system and I've got these all ready to go. And I can take a picture of me and bring it in and it should cover up everything. And it's covering up everything because it comes in at the top of the list. But look, if I move it to the bottom of the list, look how nice this looks. So it's given my picture some branding, right? Very quick, very easy. So you got a quick and dirty how to do it with a picture. In whatever software you're using, you're going to be able to do this. But I'm not going to save it. I, I don't want that picture in my save file. No need to have it. So I'm going to make sure this is saved as a J or I'm sorry, as a PNG file. Let me go in here and save it as a PNG file. So I have a uh, transparency to work with in video. Okay, so there we have it. So now I'm going to place it over top of a video. I'm going to go into Premiere Pro. So this is Premiere Pro, and I have a uh, I have uh, templates that I use, and I'm just going to go into my 4K Master template. That's my that's where I start all my projects, and I'm going into Premiere Pro, and here we are, and I want to overlay that graphic over top of a video okay so i'm going to take the graphic that i saved where is it here so i'm going to drag that png and now in in premiere pro i don't need a png i could have used a psd here but i'm going to drag the png i saved it as a png because a lot of you are going to need a png file so if i bring this over into my timeline you see it's down there but it's got a black background that's actually going to be just nothing. It's it's a transparency, but it's it shows as black. And depending on how I render the file, uh, which means export the file from this program, if I made a video out of just this, if I render it one way, it'll be over a transparent background. And if I render it another way, it'll be over um, it'll be over black. But what I need to do is is I need to find a video that I can put this over. And let's see, I'll find a video that I did last week. Let's see here, where is my video work? And I will just bring this, I don't even know what this video is. It's something I was working on last week. I will bring it right into the project. And then I am going to bring it into the video timeline itself. And actually, I'm gonna move the photo up one and I'm gonna bring this into the project. There it is now. If you notice that the uh, image that I created is not down here, but it's over here in the timeline and you're gonna be able to see it. Look, there it is, overlay, quick, easy, dirty. As you can see, I have a, in, in five minutes or so, have quickly and easily made a logo to put over top of a video in Premiere Pro. And there it is in all its glory. Now, if I move the video over top of the uh, image, you see the image has gone away. But if I move the uh, video or the, 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 the visual part of the video, this is the visual part of the video. This is the audio part of the video. So I can move it around however I want. So as long as the video part is underneath the, uh, the image, it's going to show if at some point we run out of the timeline uh, where the image is, the image is going to disappear. But in any program that you're using, you're going to be able to stretch or shorten the duration of your graphics so that your graphic can be there for the entire video. So now not only do I have a logo with a transparent background for uh, pictures, but I also have it for video. And now you can do this yourself. You can create a logo fast and easy. Of course, this is a text with box. This isn't a curly cue with round and shapes. And, you know, we didn't take it very advanced, but it's, you know, it's textual, but you can do this very quickly and easily and put it over top of video, put it over top of photos, just like that. In any software you're using, you're gonna have similar features, similar functions to what I showed you in this video. I'll give you a little tip as well. As you do your work, be sure to save it often, especially your video work because your computer can get overwhelmed and it can make it very difficult to recover 
uh, or come out of, um, you know, you get the little spinning pinwheel and you wanna save your work very, very often. So if you need to reboot your computer and kind of refresh the resources, you can do that because working with, using these uh, Photoshop documents particularly and using them with Premiere Pro, sometimes things can go a little haywire. That's the same with any other of these programs as well. So let me know in the comments below if you have a an image document program that you like to use, something other than Photoshop, and if you have a video uh, editor that you like other than Premiere Pro. I'm always interested in what other people are using and I will consider using other things in the future. I'd like to know what my options are. So leave a comment below and feel free to ask any questions about what I did here today. If you think that would help you out, I will answer everybody that leaves a question. And if you enjoyed this video, please hit the subscribe button, hit the bell so you're notified when a new video comes out. Folks, it's been wonderful spending time with you today. I will see you in the next video. Take care. Have a great day. Thank you.